Hey! In this video, I'm going to explain a little bit about diastasis recti to you, what it is, what causes it, and how we can test for it. And then in the next video, I'm gonna show you a little bit more of how to engage that area, how to start healing it or preventing it. So diastasis recti literally means separation of the rectus abdominis. So it's a widening of these, um, kind of think about the six pack muscles, right? So it's a widening right here, down the middle. As we, our belly grows, it's putting a lot of pressure on that abdominal wall and it's going to thin it out. It's gonna push against it. So we need those muscles to be really strong so they can support all of that growth and that weight that's pressing against them. To do that, we need to activate the transverse abdominal, really learn how to work those deep abdominal muscles that keep all of this in and kind of wrap around like a belt, almost like a little girdle. So we wanna focus on those things. About two thirds of women throughout their pregnancy will develop diastasis recti, which is a ton, two thirds. And if you're over 35, like we didn't have enough against us, <laughs> that increases your chances of it happening. Multiple births also increases chances, a large baby. All of those things are going to increase, I'll say that risk of, of dealing with an issue like this. So we really want to make sure that we know how to activate the core and that we utilize that and that we're going into it with a healthy start, right? Something that I want to focus on um, in these videos is what we're going to focus on breathing. We're going to focus on activation, just learning where the muscles are that I want you to think about, um, kind of how to pull those in and down, how to use them as you start moving. And that way, when you get into these exercises that we're showing you in this first, second, and third trimester, you know how to, how to hold that base in because we need to be using this core all the time. And you're gonna hear it in these videos. I'm always talking about engaging your core, turning your core on, thinking about your abdominals because it really is so important to protect the back, but also to avoid things like this. If it's an issue that you've had in the past or you're already, dealing with some some form some level of diastasis recti then i want you to be really careful when you're on your hands and knees if, it, if it's severe we're going to avoid those things entirely so we're not going to be on our hands and knees we're not going to do planks we're not going to do standard crunches i'm going to give you some movements throughout this diastasis recti series part and i want you to take those and replace them in the video if, if this is an issue for you. You can always message me. I'd be more than happy to go over things with you, how to change things out. That is absolutely not a problem. Um, but I wanted to give you some things so that you already feel like you have that knowledge and you know what you should do and when. The goal here would really be to use these exercises to keep that core nice and strong and know how to use it so that you don't end up with diastasis recti. I've had three births. My last one was larger and I was over 35 and it's not an issue I've dealt with with any of them. And I really think I can attribute all of that to knowing how to utilize my core and having a strong core when I got pregnant. And as it grew, I already kind of knew a lot of that. And I think that just had so much to do with it. That's where we want you to be. So you could use these exercises after your pregnancy, if diastasis recti is something that you're dealing with, to kind of get rid of that pooch that seems to form down in the lower abdominals, or we can use this as a preventative measure in the beginning. Wherever you are, I want you to think about that. If you're very much a beginner with exercise in general when you start this, I've already told you in the other videos, but I really want you to listen to your body. I want you to take it at a slow pace. I don't want you to lift too heavy. Your body's going to get heavier as you grow. So you're just lifting yourself is <laughs> going to get a lot harder. So don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. The fact that you're moving and that you're doing these exercises, especially these thinking about how to engage your core, that's huge. Stay there. Don't feel like being pregnant is not the time that you're, you need to work on getting buff. It's the time you need to listen to your body and make sure it's strong and prepared for what's coming and what's already happening, right? But all that being said, if you are already exercising at a moderate or more vigorous level and you feel like you kind of jump right in with these exercises, fabulous. I want you to work at the level you've been working at. I don't want you to go any higher. And keep in mind again that your body's getting bigger, your ventilation's getting, getting harder, all those things that I talk about in the other videos, but I still want you to focus on these. So if you do all of these diastasis recti, 
prevention videos and you're like, got it, wonderful. If you feel like you're like, oh, I don't think I'm actually engaging that the same way that she's talking about, then I want you to just do them a couple of times. Sprinkle them in there. Let's make sure that that is something that you're thinking about in the right way. And that way we, we, we were, we're preventing that all throughout the exercise or all throughout the series of reported pregnancy. All that being said, I am going to come down and just show you how to test for this in case it's something you're not sure if maybe you are dealing with or also to give you something to look out for, okay? So I'm gonna roll down onto my back. So I want you to lay nice and flat. Feet are flat on the floor, knees are bent. I'm gonna take my fingers and just put them here on the top of my abdominal wall. So if you have someone else with you, they can go ahead and turn their hand here. That's what we're gonna do when we come up. We're gonna kind of measure using our fingers how big this split is. So all I'm going to do is lift my head up. My shoulders are gonna stay down. I'm gonna lift my head up and you can immediately feel this lift. I can tell that after having three pregnancies, mine is deeper than it was before, but it's not wider, it came back together. Okay, so I'm gonna take my fingertips and I'm just gonna turn them and I'm gonna see how many fingers can fit between these two ridges, between these two abdominal strips. All right, so one finger is, is what I want, all right? And hopefully one smaller finger, all right? So if I can fit two, then it's getting more moderate, three severe, okay? So I want you to just think about that, how much space you have, and then also the depth. So if your finger's going really far down into your abdominal wall, that's another thing we wanna think about, just as kind of a sign. So I'm gonna include a, just a visual for you that kind of gives you the, those guidelines of the fingers, just in case you forget. But that'll give you a good idea of where you're starting from, or if it's something that you're already dealing with and you didn't realize it, now when you do these, these exercises that follow in the series, you can be mindful. Substitute the planks, the anything we do on all fours, and the crunches for these exercises until we've healed that, or maybe until you've, you've had your baby and then we can heal it again at the end. Keep all of that in mind. And again, if you have any questions at all on this, let me know. The next video is gonna include a few starter moves and just kind of getting that awareness and that transverse abdominal. So, see you there.